Hello and welcome back. This is part two of the uh, the burning shader with added d d d dissolve. Oh, I wish I could speak like normal people. Yeah, so we're going to be continuing. So let's just double click this and we get our shader up. So I did say in the last video that we were going to do the uh, the burn effect itself, which is sort of the opposite of a dissolve. And we're going to be using the exact same masked texture for this. So um, these are the only two textures you'll need. The other textures will be from whatever object that you have it on. Like if it's a character, then you'll have your character textures. But for this effect, these are the only two. So we're going to just grab our texture object that, for the, uh, the mask texture and we will create another texture sample. And that's completely the wrong thing. So, okay, I'm just going to T. There we go. Texture sample. Sorry about that, it is crazy hot today, so I think that's messing with my brain a little bit. So, uh, we're going to be using a, uh, a step, basically. It will, uh, it kind of min-maxes out a few things. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. So if I just get a step node and plug this into it, and then hit the P key. And uh, also, it's worth noting, this is... A grayscale image we don't really need to be using rgba you can just use the r and again i'm going to just do that uh it doesn't make uh too much of a difference um in my mind i like to think it's more optimal and that we're not accessing the like the full rgba components of this we only need the r channel um, but anyway we're going to use step and we could just i'll just show you here uh, so like that. So you can see as we, uh, in fact, it'll, it'll, it'll be easier if I do this with a slider, sorry. So we'll just get a float, put it into a slider, hook this in. So as we start to uh, increase this, it is essentially, something is either a value of zero or a value of one. It's either black or it's either white. Next like step will just completely obliterate anything in between. So we end up with things like this. And again, if you've been watching, um, any other dissolve sh shaders, then this is probably what they were using, either that or a smooth step. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we're gonna be using it for ours. At the moment, if we just, uh, we need to multiply this by our emission, um, which you might think is a bit strange because a, a dissolve type of effect always happens in the uh, opacity or opacity mask we'll be using opacity but this isn't this is sort of the opposite of the d dissolve we want these flames to engulf an object that is already there we can see it so we don't want to be using the opacity just yet um, so all of this will actually run through emission and we might need to put in a texture or something but for now let's just see what happens so you can see here uh, it's the exact same thing. The only difference is we're now masking this out. We're, we're not masking this out, sorry. We're masking out the emission, but we're using this as the mask. So if I increase this value, get something like that. And in fact, let me just turn this into a property. We'll call it burn. And I'll hook that into emission and apply that. And so there's our burn shader, or at least uh, the beginning of it. So dum -dum 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 -dum. it's pretty cool. Still a ways to go, but this is the beginnings. Um, so because we can see the object underneath at this point, we might as well just chuck on uh, a quick texture. So we'll stick that in the albedo, uh, apply that. And then from here, oh, might as well just rename this. You can call this uh, whatever you want, really, uh, a base diffuse albedo doesn't matter. It's essentially this is the this will be the original texture of the object and uh, of course there's nothing stopping you from creating like a full PBR material here you just hook uh, these sort of texture nodes into your normal metallic whatever else you need or anything like that. We'd, we don't need to do that for this but uh, you can do it basically. You're not restricted to just a plain flat texture you can obviously have spec and gloss and normals and emission uh not emission sorry we're using that so you can have uh, a regular material is what i'm saying um 
So yeah, so that's the wood on, and we're just burning over the wood. So the next thing we're going to take a quick look at is just the highlighting of the edges. So obviously, uh, and again, if you've done any of the dissolve shaders, this might be familiar with you. So you just want to basically create another step, but uh, it will either be smaller or larger than the original. Uh, it sort of depends on which way around you do it. One's going to be larger than the other, basically that. That's a fact. Um, and the way that I'm going to do this is just with a divide node, uh, which I think, I guess, if I hit the D key and click, nope, that isn't a shortcut. Oh, wait, sorry. Okay, my laptop is struggling. So we're going to divide this, uh, get a node in here. We don't need to make this a property. There's no need to, uh, to access this on the shader itself, but just so we know what it is, we'll call this just divide amount. And I'm going to set, once I hook these in, I'm going to set this amount to uh, maybe just 1.1, something like that. Uh, oh, sorry, that's the minimum, so default value, 1.1. Um, so now if I hook this into step and we grab the same mask, uh, you can see this is slightly smaller than this. So if I increase this, uh, the original burn slider, you can see that, uh, okay, it's quite hard to tell. So let me just increase this amount to something a little bit more obvious, uh, even 1.5 or something. So this is the larger step, and then this is the slightly smaller one. And I prefer to kind of hook these things through a divide node so we don't have to worry about multiple values um, to try and get the same result. Uh, like the same sort of large and small, it's all essentially feeding through one slider, which is always handy, especially if you're handing uh, shaders off to other people. Um, it's best to make them as simple as possible in terms of sort of what they need to be using over here. Um, so yeah, we have one that's slightly larger than the other, and we're just going to subtract by pressing S and clicking. So we're going to subtract these two results. And so now we have this edge, which is probably way too huge. So I'm going to come back to my divide amount and uh, start with 1.2, something like that. Uh, in fact, sorry, if you focus on the subtract node here, as we change this value, you see if it's at one, then we see nothing because we're subtracting uh, the same thing over itself. If you increase it, then you can start to see the um, the result of what's subtracted. I've been rambling on about this for way too long. You probably understood the concept about 25 minutes ago, but okay, so that's that. And this is what we're gonna be using for the uh, the edge highlight. And the way that I do this is I just add uh, this result and the, uh, the original sort of larger uh, cutout version over the top of each other. And so from here, it's kind of hard to see what will happen, but I'm just, I'm adding this result and this result. So we're going to get the edges to be slightly higher and we'll just feed that into the multiply instead of what we were doing before. And hopefully uh, you'll be able to see what happens. So I'm going to hit this and then we'll take a look at the, the shader on the model. There's that glowing edge. And again, you have control over this, uh, with this parameter. So try to increase it to something crazy and then save that out. Now we have a larger one. Uh, I'm gonna bring this back down to something uh, not so standout-ish. Another reason that you wouldn't wanna make this a property is uh, later on changing this divide amount value uh, will also mean that you'll have to change the, uh, the burn amount max amount. Um, I'll show you what I mean later on. For now, it, uh, it doesn't really play a role, so I am getting a bit ahead of myself. Doesn't look half bad, but we will now just go and introduce the, uh, the heat wave effect. Like, so it looks like it's actually kind of distorting the air around it. And the way that we're going to do this is, uh, again, we're just going to steal the normal map that we already had up there. So I'll press T to get in a texture sample. Uh, sorry if this isn't 
so huge on screen. Um, maybe we could give this a little bit more room. Zoom this guy out. So we're just going to feed this into here. Uh, and again, make sure unpack normal map is checked so that this is actually a normal map. Um, oh, also while I'm here, um, if anybody knows Shadowforge at all with the, uh, the ability to get and set certain nodes, uh, basically to stop you from crossing wires over crazy places, uh, let me know because at, at the moment I haven't been able to work out how to do it with Amplify. Um, but essentially, if you're if you're unfamiliar with Sh Shadowforge, you can um, you can d d do something like I can bring out a value and like for now I'll just say step. But let's just say this value is uh, okay. So I won't let me do that. So texture sample. Let's say this is the uh, the set value. So I'm putting this in there, and then the idea is somewhere completely somewhere else. I plop down another node, and this would be a get v value. And then I could basically start to create more stringy nodes somewhere else, and it would be referencing this thing over here. Um, so yeah, sorry to go a little bit off tangent there, but if anyone knows how to do that in Amplify, I would love to know. Um, but anyway, back to this. We're going to be refracting the overall texture, like because we are we're already using it to create this sort of flamey type thing. But we want to kind of do uh, a kind of overall version that affects the entire texture. So we will again need to be doing a pan, and uh, so we'll just grab this, and we'll also grab the texture coordinates while we're here. Put those there, uh, but we we want to do this the other way around. So we're going to start with the texture coordinates and put those into UVs. Uh, and then again here, um, because I just copied over this panel node, it already has the minus one value put in. So if you're creating panel node manually, uh, make sure you set the speed as minus one or one or X or whichever one you want, but make sure it's one of those. Um, I'd be willing to bet that if uh, if you're following along with this tutorial, this is probably the point where your result is not the same as mine because it, it will almost certainly be because uh, the panel node doesn't have that minus one. So we have this, um, which is pretty cool. And this we want to actually, we're going to control the speed of this with the exact same slider th that we have there here for uh, s s scroll speed. You could, if you wanted, uh, use a completely different slider, uh, but from experience, uh, it, 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 it is best to really keep this area uh, as, as simple as you can get away with. Um, like we've been sort of handed custom shaders at work and uh, it's almost like you then have to hop in a phone call with the guy that made the shader because it's just so crazy complicated uh, and like there's sort of like 20 values and s sliders that you have to adjust and each one kind of has to be perfect and some depend on the values of others and it's just it's just nasty uh, it's real nasty so um, we're gonna take advantage of a node uh, sorry not a node a well yeah a node string that already exists with the scroll speed and essentially here because we've put it into time so we're just going to grab this one and put that into time and this is already starting to get a bit messy I'm probably going to need to drag these out a bit we have a copy um, of our normal map and it's scrolling now we're going to do the same component mask and we don't want the Z, which would be the, uh, the blue. So we just want red and green, X and Y. And again, we're going to multiply this by a value because we want to control the strength. So put down a float, call this one. On my previous one, I just had it called Jiggle because that was what it did. But for this one, I guess we'll call it uh, Heat Wave just to make it a bit more recognizable. Uh, so we'll create this as a property. Um, minimax, like we'll turn it into a slider for now. And now, if I just hook this straight into the UVs with here, things aren't going to work very well. Like if I, uh, if I just apply this so we can see it on the actual model. So if I increase the uh, 
heat wave effect. Oh, in fact, it's not doing anything, uh, which is actually a little bit surprising. Ah, uh, maybe... Okay, yeah, sorry, so our uh, burn amount wasn't high enough. So, at the moment, this is what our heat wave does, which, as you can see, is uh, it's completely wrong, because it is still, it's scrolling the entire mask, which we don't want to do. Um, and the reason it's scrolling the mask is because, well, I mean, we're t telling it to. We have our texture co coordinates here. It's going into a panel node, which is scrolling this uh, normal map, and then we are feeding that into the UVs. So we are telling this to scroll up. Um, whereas we want to give it a similar treatment as before. So do you remember where we had to add in a texture coordinate uh, here? Um, so we were already controlling the UVs on this one and we were just scrolling it. Uh, but when the distortion amount was at zero, then we weren't even getting the texture because we were essentially saying UVs equals zero. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're just going to grab a texture UV node, if I can spell it right. And it is just the exact same thing. So we're just going to add these two together. And so now you can see what's happening. Uh, the mask is sort of s s staying still, but the refraction map is moving over it. So the texture that we have will stay in place, but the refraction will move. So if I hit apply on that. Okay, so there it is. It's a bit strong. So if I uh, some bring down my burn amount, in fact, it's crazy strong. So the heat wave, start to bring this down. Found a value of about 0 0.02, works okay, but uh, essentially that is our heat wave. And I apologize if it's uh, pretty framey. My laptop seems to be struggling a bit. But yeah, that's that. Uh, and at this point, just for the sake of it looking nice, I am going to re enable my post processing with the bloom. So yeah, there's this. So we can see now our object begins to burn. And at the moment it does not dissolve away into an ashy blackness of nothing. So we just have it burning. Uh, my bloom is insanely high for some reason. So let's just go and turn that down. That'll be fine. Okay, so that's unfortunately all I have time for. Uh, I was hoping to do the uh, d dissolve stuff as well, but I, I think I've rambled on a bit too much. Um, so this is going to be now a three-parter, which I wasn't intending, uh, where we will go into the actual dissolve side of things, which if you already know how to do that, um, you may be wondering how that's, uh, like how will you do the sort of the edge stuff, because we're already using emission, remember, for the, uh, the burn, and it took me a little while to work out, and uh, You'll have to stay tuned basically i'm sort of holding that one back um, but we want the if you can remember for the original one if we put this here and increase the burn oh actually select it so if i increase the burn so you can see here we we have this black edge now and if you were to just leave the, the video here and try to do that yourself based on the previous knowledge you have about dissolve maps, I can guarantee that you're going to get a bit stuck on something. So I hope that you've learned something again and stick around for part three where we will be doing the uh, dissolve where we have the uh, the black ashy edge and we'll also take a look at the, uh, the vertex displacement um, which wasn't shown in the original but I figure we might as well throw it in. So yeah, uh, stick around. Um, we will for sure finish it in the next one and hopefully it should be a quick one. So thank you for watching and I will see you there. Mm -hmm.